the 2N4871 unijunction transistor as you can see on the left here the majority of the material is a chunk of n-doped silicon and there's a small place that is doped P material which is labeled E. We've got two bases B1 at the bottom and B2 at the top. This circuit is a representation of what this unijunction transistor will look like using an ohmmeter which we'll get to in a minute or so. Here's a diagram of a unijunction transistor that you'll find in circuits and schematics and this is the physical bottom view of a unijunction transistor. The B1 connection is all the way to the left, E is in the center, and the B2 connection is on the right. This is a video using an ohmmeter to test a unijunction transistor. I've got the negative lead on B2, positive lead on B1, and we're just a little under 5,000 ohms. I'm going to reverse the leads, negative on B1, positive on B2. And again, just a little under 5,000 ohms. Now I've got the positive lead on E and the negative lead on B2. And we've got about 25 megs there. And on B1, a little over 25 megs. Now I'm going to reverse that and put the negative lead on E. Infinite ohms. Because the diode that's in there is reverse bias. Now I've got it on B1. Infinite ohms again. So that's what a unijunction transistor looks like and tests correctly with an ohmmeter. Unijunction transistors are used in circuits sometimes to fire SCRs and quite often, like in this circuit, it's an oscillator. This is a very common circuit for a unijunction transistor. The 10K ohm resistor and the .047 microfarad capacitor make up the time constant which makes up the frequency that this unijunction transistor will fire or oscillate. I have hooked up my oscilloscope to this circuit and E of the unijunction transistor is hooked up to channel 2 producing a very nice sawtooth wave B1 is hooked up to channel 1 and it's producing very short positive spikes. Both channel 2 and channel 1 are at the same exact gain. And the height of the sawtooth wave and the spikes are about the same. Now I've connected channel 1 of the oscilloscope to B2 and you can see that we have negative spikes there but I have also increased the gain of channel 1 by 10 because the output 
is much less than B1. This is the video of when I was turning up the gain on channel 1. Let's take a look at that sawtooth wave that's being produced between the resistor and the capacitor and that is the RC time constant which means it's gonna take so much time for electrons to charge that capacitor because of that 10k ohm resistor and of course the amount of the capacitor. Both of those items make up the RC time constant. Now when the voltage is high enough, when the charge gets high enough of that capacitor, it is connected to E of the unijunction transistor and it will fire that transistor. And when that happens, the capacitor is discharged through E, B1, and that 100 ohm resistor to ground. And then the whole thing starts over again because the unit junction transistor will then shut off. It will no longer be firing. And then the capacitor will charge up again. And when it gets to the firing point, E will fire and the capacitor will discharge again and over and over and over. Now I just measured what the firing voltage is in this circuit and it turns out to be a little bit over 6 volts. Thanks for watching.